Okay, this is a showcase burn of my small double stack T-LUD biochar kiln or charcoal making kiln. Um, I'm gonna talk through the different components here and then I'll show you how it's gonna be set up and then we'll get the burn going. This is a seven and a half gallon metal drum, the bottom of which has a bunch of holes drilled in it for airflow set up on these little metal brackets I have for spacers. So we get good airflow through the bottom. Got a bunch of chopped up um, offcuts from the, the wood shop here that will be the main fuel for the burn. Um, this is the little separator. So this is where air is gonna be introduced, secondary air will be introduced into this unit. And right in here, there's gonna be a lot of turbulence happening. And uh, on top of this is where I'm gonna put my secondary retort. And that's this bucket right here. You can see there's a little hole drilled in the top of this bucket. It's a three gallon steel pail. Inside is packed a bunch of redwood droppings, lightly packed, not super dense, so that there's good breathability. But basically this is gonna bake. It's not gonna burn, it's gonna bake. And what's gonna happen is, even though this isn't a perfectly airtight seal, the wood gases are gonna be pushed out of this spot, this little hole. And that little hole is gonna be set right here. All right, the bucket will be flipped upside down. And on top of that is gonna go this container right here. So that's gonna sit right on top. And basically that's gonna get a good secondary burn here. There's a bunch of holes drilled right at the bottom of this container to get that secondary air injection. And we're gonna bake all of the carbon that's in here. And so we'll just get that basically a pure conversion from the material that's there to charcoal. Uh, no combustion happening, whereas this one's going to be both pyrolysis and some combustion happening. Um, <clears throat> once we got the fire lit and this piece goes on top, it's going to start to draw a little bit, but to really accelerate things, I'm going to drop this chimney stack on top of that, and then it's really going to start to pull, and then we'll get a good strong airflow, lots of good turbulent air mixing, and even though it's a cold day, we should be able to get a relatively clean burn. So this is what the kiln looks like when it's mostly set up. Got the bottom unit, as I already showed. Secondary air injection here. And you can see, sort of, let's see there, right in through there, so you can see the holes on the other side. So there'll be air getting drawn in here, helping increase that turbulence. And then right inside here is that three gallon bucket tipped upside down. That's the baking unit, the oven part. That's gonna be injecting additional wood gas right into this area where we're getting additional oxygen coming in getting a good secondary combustion. And then I've also drilled the set of holes up here at the top um, as I've been tweaking this, because again, this wasn't a exactly engineered design. I was making this out of scraps that we have laying around, but all in all, it's happened to work pretty well. But I found that by having tertiary air injection up here at the top, we actually get a little bit better burn off of any remaining wood smoke here. Um, in the future, obviously we'd love that to happen below the secondary retort in the middle. Um, but for now, this is what we're doing, what we're working with. So once this gets going, we'll put the chimney on top and get it really pulling. And uh, I'll go ahead and break this down now and I'll show you the lighting procedure for getting the bottom container and the T-LED material lit. So the way I like to light these is just make a little roll of a piece of cardboard, put in a single piece of paper, turns it into a little chimney. I'll usually light it on the bottom and it'll start to pull, create its own draft. And I'm just gonna wedge that in with the wood, pack a few pieces around it, let that get going, and that'll get a good top ignition gone, going um, for the wood. Once the flame is spread all the way to the sides, then I'll go ahead and put on the separator and then the, uh, the secondary retort and the outer shell. So I'll, uh, I'll see if I can get it lit and then get the camera back on as quick as possible so you guys can see that process. All right, so the flame is lit, it's starting to pull. I'm gonna move my fingers here soon and just get it braced in, get it nice and stable so it can get a good start. All right, so there's the little ignition chimney. That's gonna start burning. And once we got good ignition on the top, we'll go ahead and set on those secondary units. Since I'm dealing with a bit of wind, uh, wind today, I go ahead and put on the outer shell. So that just kind of buffers the, uh, the wind a little bit, lets this thing start and it. It does also help it draw slightly. Um, so you can see it down there. Flames are a little bit more controlled now and they're starting to spread. So we'll get those good and spread. Then I'll take this off, put on the separator and the retort, and then this will go back on, followed by the chimney. 
Okay, here we are about a minute and a half later, and you can see flames are good and caught. So we're gonna pull this off and then put on the separator and secondary reed. To show this really quickly before I put on the secondary container, so we got the wood caught, separator's there, bucket is now upside down. So that means the little pinhole is down there. That's starting to bake all of the carbon that's inside, and that's pushing any sort of volatile gases out right back into this combustion chamber where it can be used to continue heating that biomass. So next I'm gonna put this guy on top, followed by the chimney, and we'll get to see how it's drawing. Okay, there's the full stack. We've got the secondary retort in. We've got the, uh, the skin, the second barrel around that. So there's actually a, I forget the exact numbers, but there's basically an equivalent number of square inches of airspace between this outer skin and the inner retort that's about the same as this chimney. So that kind of worked out nice. Um, always good to try and keep that cross-sectional area ratio consistent as we're moving up. Definitely a bit windy today. I used to have a tertiary skin around this chimney that would sit over this top barrel to help increase the temperature more, but I took that off after the last burn, so hopefully it doesn't get too windy here. I'm gonna have to brace that with some bricks, but we still got a little smoke, and uh, I'll come back as soon as we get that to clear up. But basically, once this starts pulling strong, we should see that smoke go away and it should start burning pretty clear. We're getting a good rockety burn down here, and the hotter it gets, the more that's gonna pull. Okay, so since it's pretty cold today and we got a bit of wind, I went and just refitted that tertiary sleeve outside the other one. Um, that's gonna basically, there's a little gap between this barrel and this one, and that's allowing the air that's coming into those tertiary air injection holes to be preheated as it comes up. Um, I'd love to expand on this design with some more intentional engineering in the future to see if Really, if you can get a lot of preheated air starting down here with either tubes wrapped in an insulative layer, but then basically making sure that the air that's coming in here to the secondary injection is always really hot and ready to combust. Um, today, we're definitely fighting the temperatures. So we're still got some smoke at the top. It's not as clean as I'd like it to be. Um, hopefully we'll get there. Sometimes it just takes a little bit. Um, it's getting better, but we'd still like to see a cleaner burn than that. Getting a pretty good burn here in the middle. Kind of see the, the turbulence going on. Again, it'd be great if each of these holes had basically its own tube starting down here. We're intaking here, a tube that runs up along the side of this barrel and is wrapped in an insulative layer. So that the whole way it's coming up is getting heated, heated, heated. And the moment it gets sucked into that spot, it's really hot and ready to combust. But we still got a decent amount of turbulence and air mixing going on in there. Good warm burn. It's definitely toasty by the barrel, which is a nice place to be on this day. And we are getting a little bit cleaner up here. You can still see a little bit of smoke, but it's improving slowly. The way I like to check progress on the burn is just to get my fingers wet and the dousing water and then just flick it on the side. I don't know if you can see that, but basically I look for how far down the barrel is it that the, the flame front is by how quick the water droplets burn off. I should have done this sooner because we're basically here at the bottom. Sometimes it's the, the water droplet will persist on the side of the barrel and that's where you know, okay, the flame front hasn't quite made it there, but it's just about at the bottom. You saw that one slowly dissipating there and you can see the, the light of the flames here at the bottom. So the flame front has reached the bottom. That means we're getting close to complete cooking. This was really light. Um, probably dug fir and pine offcuts from the shop so they're gonna burn really quick um, still haven't cleaned up he's even gotten a little bit dirtier kind of keeps going back and forth between clean dirty clean dirty so definitely more that needs to be optimized here better temperature better insulation on the chimney stack would be great insulation here and here and then just a, a tighter budgeting of the cross-sectional area of the airflow between the bottom grate here at the bottom of the the first burn chamber and the secondary and then potentially the tertiary. Those might've been a little bit overkill, but either way, we're gonna get some charcoal and it's gonna be pretty good quality. So we're getting closer to the end here. We still got orange and yellow flame, which means we're still burning off a bunch of the volatile gases. Um, what I'm looking for when this lower burn kind of calms down and we'll see it switch to more of the blue and purple, that's indicating that we're entering, we're getting out of the py pyrolysis phase and we're getting into combustion. Um, this one may not get there because we got some, again, funky wood and even some of them had a little bit of paint on them, but um, we'll look for that sign in the burn. And then up here, we've got 
you know, probably the cleanest we've had. We've got flame popping out the top, which is not ideal. That means that we could be doing a lot better down here where it's more valuable to have that combustion of those gases instead of up here. But it's good feedback to optimize for the future. But you can see like there's really, there's no smoke now. Um, so that's good. We're finally, everything's up to temp. It's very warm, which is really awesome to be around. And we'll just keep monitoring that flame, looking for when things start to get a little bit blue and purple down there, then we know, okay, all the fuel down here at least is pretty much cooked off all of the volatiles and is just gonna be left with pure char. There's the unit from a distance, got that nice glow on the bottom. So the flame front is well and good at the bottom. It's been cooking all that carbon down there. Still got nice and clean at the top, just heat, heat waves coming out. And I think we're getting close to that transition point. You can still see the top of the material in there. Flame color has shifted a little bit. Still got a one pocket of bright orange and yellow, so I'll wait a little bit longer and uh, just get the best quality stuff we can get out of this burn. So the rain has just started. You can see the little, look like bullets pinging off the side of this thing. Little raindrops hitting it and steaming in, uh, immediately. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, probably terminate the burn here before we get any more of that stuff coming our way. But let's see, uh, still got a good amount of yellow and orange. There's definitely a shift in color over here. We got some of the deeper stuff. Um, so I think, I think we're pretty close. I might try and eke it a few more minutes. So I'm halfway through disassembling the unit. Just wanted you guys to see how much calmer the burn is here. Uh, granted, we took the chimney off, so it's not as crazy, but materials burnt down a good bit. Um, we never quite got that calm, relaxed flame color. We still got some oranges and yellows, but there's some blue starting to show up. Um, but I wanted to save it while I still got some, some decent material down there. And then uh, we'll see what we got here in the secondary retort as well. Okay, here we have the two different fractions of quenched char. So this is the primary burn material. As you can see, it wasn't all exactly graded to the same size. So we had some larger like two by sixes and then a bunch of like really thin 5H pine flooring boards. Um, but char is good quality, breaks really easily. It's got a good sound. And I bet just based on how this feels right now, if it were dry and I was crinkling it, it would sound like breaking glass, which is a good sign. Um, so we'll let this hang out here since it's gonna rain tonight anyways and just fully hydrate. Um, if we leave it for a day or so, everything will be sunk to the bottom. That's how we'll know that water has managed to um, sink into all the pores and the charcoal and fully hydrate it. Um, that's good. And then we'll come back and test it and see how clean it is. Um, seems to be pretty good. Smells pretty clean. There might be a little bit of volatiles left, but washes off fairly easy off my hands. That's a good sign. There's definitely some volatile stuff left. This stuff is usually better quality. So again, this was really fine material. Um, redwood branches and leaves. As you can see, they really, they all retain their shape. Um, but it breaks, so it just it just crushes into this like super fine powder, which is nice for these uh, for these redwood pieces. So it's really good for doing you know soil amendment work. Uh, if you're getting into potting mixes, I do like the quarter inch size material best for grow beds and the like. But this is a really good way to make some finer stuff. Um, let's see if I can find a twig here that will kind of show. Yeah, so here's a twig, and it just snaps super easy nice and clean, very light. I can squish it and just grind it right into dust if I want to between my fingers. So this is great material, super good quality. I'll keep them separate because that's so much finer than this stuff and um, I store them separately for different use cases. And uh, it's starting to rain now. So that's little homemade two seven and a half gallon barrels, uh, double stack tea lead for some heat recovery and trying to get a little bit more productivity out of that initial burn. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, get out there, make some biochar.